so here we are. This is um, quite a few times I've tried to do this now. We are recording here at the Chateau Marmont, um, and it is quite windy. Um, but what I wanted to do is talk to you a little bit about reading books and the people that you associate with those books. I'm sure for those of you who read the Twilight books, there's probably a group of people you knew that read those books with you. So whenever you think of the Twilight books, you think of those people. Or the Harry Potter books, or the Hunger Games, or whatever book that would be. When I read Vonnegut, I think of my buddy Chris, um, because he was the one who got me in to reading Vonnegut, um, you know, and, um, for those of you who've been watching this channel for a long time, you might, um, you might have noticed that every once in a while I'll start reading a bunch of Bukowski books that I've already read, and that becomes, like, my obsession. <sighs> now, the reason for this is... I might have said it on here before, but I want to get into a little more detail here. I'm trying to exercise my demons. Is that a buddy of mine um, very much reminds me of Bukowski. And since Bukowski's stuff is so... It's fictional, but it's very autobiographical. Um... A lot of his stuff makes me think of this guy. Um, and um, we'll, ca we'll call him Alex for right now. And Alex um, is a guy I worked with um, basically off and on for like 10 years. And then after I stopped working at the place, um, we kept in touch for years, um, after until probably, I want to say like 2013 or 2014, and, um, he was about 20 years older than me, but he was crazy, and we would get into all sorts of shit. And, um, it was like every time, like when, like when you're reading a Bukowski book and well, when I read Bukowski, I picture Alex, I picture his face, I picture him talking, um, and I picture him like talking to me. And like, there's times I realize it and I'm like, you know what? I need to. Like, like this is Bukowski talking. This isn't Alex talking. But they were so similar. And, um, like, the same face, the same pockmarks, the same alcoholic nose, you know. Um, the same, uh, so much stuff. And a lot of times, like, when you're reading a Bukowski book... You're like, there's no way this stuff happened to somebody. That all of these horrible things could have happened to the same person. And um, Alex was that guy. Like, the situations he would get himself into were comical. And he was always so weird about his past that he would tell me and others so many different events that led him from birth to where we met that like you had no idea what to believe is real. <clears throat> so another thing about the Bukowski books that helped me is that he basically, you could read the novels and go through his entire life from like in, 
in not publication order, but chronological order from Hamlin Rye even through to Pulp. Um, you go through his whole life. And so there's a part of me that likes to use Bukowski's pre-turning 40 years old life into Alex's life because it's easier for me. And then like even um, Alex, uh, when he got, I think it was his second marriage, he had a Zen wedding, like a Buddhist wedding, um, just like the Zen wedding in the story. I think it's called the Zen wedding. But the difference in that story was Alex was the one getting married and I was the Bukowski character. I was the idiot. I was the guy who ran up to the monk and said, listen, motherfucker, you either give me your robe or you give me your ears. You know, like, um, ugh, I made a fucking ass of myself that night, man. <sighs> That's a story for another day. But, um, like, so much stuff reminds me of him. And through the years, and as the years went on, it got worse and worse. Um, but he would call me in the middle of the night and say, "Say, buddy, I'm gonna end it all. This is, I'm doing it tonight. Um, I got a knife, or I got a gun, or like he would always have some crazy thing, and his wife would be in the background, or whatever girlfriend he had at the time, and um, they'd be screaming, and he was just like." totally drunk at like three or four o'clock in the morning and I would always have to talk him down um and then like there was one time he called and um I'm like dude if you're gonna do it just do it you know like y you talk a good talk but I, I don't think you're gonna do it and he's like, you know, you're right. I was just trying to piss off my wife or whatever. And then, um, like, those calls kind of stopped after that. Um, which is weird, because usually <clears throat> when he was that messed up, he would never remember the conversations we had. But somehow he remembered that. So the rest of the time that we spoke, it was always um, not three o'clock in the morning trying to keep him from killing himself. But, um, then I lost touch with him because he lost the job that he was at and he moved back East, um, to stay with some family. I think that's what I was told at least. And, um, one morning he went to, um, I, I actually, don't want to tell the story because, um, in case his family comes across this, I don't want it to, but he killed himself. And, um, in a very deliberate way. <clears throat> and, um, I probably hadn't talked to him for like two years when that happened. And, um, I felt, maybe I feel it, like, responsible or something like that. Um, but as much as he would drive me crazy, like, you would, you would hang out with him for, like, a couple weeks and then be like, if I ever see him again, it'll be too soon, you know? Um, but then you miss the shenanigans and you miss the madness so the dogs just came in. You come in. Um, you okay? Yes. Good. So I miss him a lot and I think about him a lot. And so when I go through all the Bukowski books, it makes me kind of feel warm and fuzzy, I guess, like that he didn't kill himself, and I'm still talking to him, you know? But, um, 
So going through all of them, um, there's always something that like I can like some story of Bukowski's I'll read that reminds me of some ridiculous, stupid thing that he did and, um, or something we did together or something like that. So I know I've brought up that Bukowski reminds me of a buddy of mine, but I don't think I ever got in depth with the story. Um, so that's basically it. And I know a lot of you out there are like, I can't read Bukowski because he's such a piece of crap and da 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 whatever, you know, like that's fine. If you feel that way and my Bukowski videos come up, just don't watch them if that's the deal, you know. Um, but no matter what kind of guy Bukowski was, I associate him with someone who I miss a lot. So, I don't care if he's offensive to you. Um, a lot of times, too, in the books I've written and stuff, I've made him... Not Bukowski, but Alex. I made him a character in the book. Um, just so, like, I could kind of hear him talk to me, you know? And sometimes I'll write the stories where there are situations that we were in. And other times, I write new situations for him to get into and see kind of how he would handle it, just because I miss him. So, um, I write a lot of poems, and a lot of them, not a lot of them, but a good number of them, are to him and, like, me checking on him. I guess, but, um, it's like, I know that he would have killed himself anyway. Like, I can't, I can't take that responsibility, you know, but, um, it doesn't change the fact that, like, I think about it, and I always wonder, like, like, why did he stop calling me, you know, when he moved? Because, like, we never got into a fight. I mean, the last time I talked to him, he uh, <laughs> was hitting me up for money. And I'm like, dude, I am broke as shit. Why are you calling me? <laughs> um, but that was, like, the last actual conversation I had with him. I was in Toluca Lake, standing on the side of the road. So weird. But anyway, um, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who have books or authors that you relate to somebody who you associate them with. And like I was saying about like my buddy Chris and Vonnegut, you know, like, I don't think I could ever read Breakfast of Champions and not think of my buddy Chris. That probably wouldn't make him feel very good. <laughs> um, but it's the truth. And um, there are certain people, like, even when I say Twilight, there's certain people who I know who were so into those books when they came out that, like, I associate those books with them. And, like, um... Like the... Like the Raven Boys. Like, who do we think of? Brit. Brit, you know? It's like, you have people that you associate with, and when those people are gone, um... Like I was saying, though, 
like you have those when those people are gone. So that's it. That was the only point I was trying to make. And I turned this into a damn therapy session. So apologies. Um, and yeah, let me know down below if you have anybody um, that you associate with certain literary works um, and how you go about that. So um, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.